Hello everyone. Welcome back. Welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome to the new moon in Aries reading. Now, coincidentally or not, this um, new moon is taking place on the equinox, March 21st. Now, I say equinox because some of you are in the North Hemisphere, so it's the spring equinox. Others of you are in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the fall equinox. Regardless, it is the equinox, which makes it a very special new moon in my mind. Now, I also want to point out, uh, if you've watched the video that I just put up yesterday on the Chosen Ones channel, you might want to skip through this. Otherwise, this is in regards to um, us getting the message that winter was a gestation period for us. And as we come into spring, our lives are going to start moving forward. This is the big shift starting to move in and, and take place in our world, which means our worlds are going to be literally turned upside down. We're going to be, you're not going to recognize your world very soon here. But from what I understand, the um, blessings are going to trickle in. They're not some of you may get dumped on, so to speak. Others of you, it's going to trickle in. But I know for me, I've been asked to just slow down. I'm trying to sell things. I'm trying to move forward. And I keep being held back and slowed down. So if you're in that same boat where you're trying to move forward or you're trying to get something done and you just can't seem to do it, maybe it's Spirit's way of letting you know that you need to slow down too, okay? Now, I don't have any of the moon cards out yet. Hang on a second. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I've got two cards from the uh, Moonology deck, and I've got one card from the Moonology Manifestation deck. They're all by um, Yasmin Boland, okay? So we've got new moon. This is a new start is coming, absolutely. And it's, it's taking place on the equinox so the beginning of spring fall wherever you're at i'm gonna say where i'm at okay i'm in the northern hemisphere so i'm gonna talk like i'm in the northern hemisphere it's it's newness no matter how you look at it and then we've got the new moon in aries and it's time to take action this does not mean today tomorrow but soon it could be a couple of weeks from now. It could be a month from now. But get ready because we've been in that gestation period all winter. Some of us, it's a, the gestation period is of our lives. It's a gestation period in our entire life, not just seasonal. Okay. Now, coming out of that gestation period and into the spring, it's going to open up so many new areas and i want to know from spirit in this reading where it's taking us and what we can expect from it now this is the mo the moonology manifestation deck new moon in aries go for it see time to take action go for it um yeah it's it's crazy now i want to thank everybody again who's been donating to my channel and um either by way of a cash donation or by purchasing things on my website. I appreciate it. Those of you that would like to support me through this difficult time I find myself in financially and don't want to make just a cash donation, maybe you'd like something to show for the money that you're putting out, check the link down below for my website because I've got a bunch of stuff on my website that I'm selling and it's there's very reasonably priced items too if you don't want to spend a whole lot of money okay Just let me get this set up here i truly appreciate all the support that everyone gives me so if that's where you're headed i thank you so much and i will thank you again down the road anyways let's get into this okay so first of all, I would really like to thank Yasmin Boland for all of her moon information. I get everything from her Moonology Diary, which will be listed below with all the decks that I use as usual. Now, 
what she wants us to know with this new moon is that it is in Aries, as we already know, but that's the first sign of the zodiac, which means that we're now at the start of a new full lunar cycle that will see new moons happening in all 12 signs of the zodiac over the next coming year. This new moon, though, takes place against the background of one of the biggest events of the astrological year, and that's the move of the power planet Pluto from Capricorn into Aquarius. Now, this new placement is going to last until early June when Pluto retrogrades back into Capricorn. And for thousands of years, people, mainly women, but also some enlightened men, have made magic by the light and the dark of the moon. Then everything changed, and women, of course, who practiced moon magic were put to death by flames. As you can imagine, as a result, such magical practices either went underground or, in many cases, they stopped altogether. Women no longer told their daughters the secrets of the moon. Until now, the Divine Feminine is re-emerging and with it, magical practices such as intention setting at the new moon and resistance release at the full moon. So that's what we're looking at setting intentions because we're at a new moon it's a new beginning it's a new start it's time to take action and we're being asked to go for it okay so the cards are ready let's get some timing cards here your first card out <laughs> yeah no doubt because it's a new moon we've got the darkness card there is no light from the moon or not much when it's a new moon now this is the long night moon, okay? We're gonna get into that a little more in a minute. I'm gonna put these cards right so you can see them and so I've got room for them. I'll put this over here. Okay, next card out. Oh, wow, full moon, power. Ay ay ay. this is gonna be some moon. I can feel it. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of growth. A lot of growth. There has been a lot of growth. We are coming out of the gestation period, and that's what the gestation period was all about. Our growth. And moving us into the power. Our power. And now we've got that purity card again. Oh my goodness, this takes me back to, I think it was October 9th, full moon reading. And there were um, some future messages there for us. Because if I'm not mistaken, this mistaken, this snow moon, this purity moon, is the February full moon. And you know what? There, it, this goes deep because around that full moon in February, there were a, a few future messages from a past full moon reading, which was, I believe, October 9th. You'll have to check in my listings of videos. It's going to be one that shows the moon kind of melting down the side of a cliff. And look for the, the date on it. I'm sure it was October 9th, full moon. But anyways, purity. I am blown away that that's showing back up in the reading now. Okay, let's get the timing on the moons here now. We've got the darkness here, the long night moon. Now that long night moon is in December. Then we've got the full moon here with the power. This is going to be the next full moon, which is the beginning of April, right? Then we've got the snow moon, purity. This is the February full moon. So... Um, we've got December and then we've got the February full moon and the waxing crescent three is uh, three days after the new moon and the new moon is the 21st so the 24th of March you're going to feel this growth.
but I'm, I don't think that I'm trying to understand what is it that we're doing here? Is this full moon the next full moon coming or is this the previous? It's the next. Okay, thank you. Okay, so <laughs> let's start again. We've got the long night moon, which talks about darkness, and that's from December. Then we shift into the snow moon, purity, which is February's full moon. Okay. Then we move into the 24th of March, which is right after the new moon that we're doing the reading for now. And then we shift into the full moon, which is in Libra and it's April 6th. Okay. So we've got the beginning of December, the beginning of February, because they're both full moons. Then we've got the 24th of March and then we've got the 6th of April. Now I want to get, what are we using? Okay, Gaia Oracle cards. We're going to find out what's, what's happening. What these moons have affected in our world, in our lives. Okay, so on the December long night moon and darkness and on the snow moon or purity from February, we've got hidden path, the marriage of spirit and matter. If I'm not mistaken, this card showed up in the October 9th or the past messages that held future messages is now the present. You know, the moon that's kind of melting over the edge of a cliff. It might have been in there. Being that it sits on the darkness card and the purity card makes me believe that they're definitely, we had no clue where we were going. If you think back to the beginning of December, right through to the beginning of February, did you feel a little lost? I know I did. I had no clue where I was headed. I was just going with the flow, moving down that dark hallway, I like to call it, where you're kind of in between your old world and your new world. You haven't left the old and you haven't landed in the new yet. And the hidden path. This is about the marriage of spirit and matter. So it's about finding that way to meld or mesh your ego with your um, intuition. Finding the balance between the two. And that's, that's where you're going to find this hidden path. That is, I, I can't, I can't tell you how deep that message is. You're either going to sense it and get it or you're not. If you're ready for that message, the depth of it, you're going to get it. If you're not, please don't worry about it. It's not a derogatory remark. It's not, it's not anything. It's just not the right time for you to get that message. But I can tell you that there is something really deep here. I'm not fully getting it but I can sense it. This hidden path, we've been on it. That's part of the gestation process. We've been on this hidden path through winter and possibly longer. I feel like I've been on this, this journey, this type of journey for over a year now. And it's, it's been all about finding that balance between intuition and intellect to find it's all about law of attraction because when we attract things to us when we can work that law of attraction to the best of our ability that will bring things 
that's going to attract everything we want so much faster because moving things by way of law of attraction is a lot faster than trying to move matter, so to speak. And that's, I think that's what the growth has been. That's what the gestation period was all about, getting us to that place where we can move things with our minds rather than with our hands. Wow, like I said, it's a deep message and you're going to sense it or you're not going to sense it. Some of you are getting getting it, knowing exactly what it's, it's saying. So we're all at different levels. Please do not feel bad if you're not getting it at all. And don't look down on us that aren't getting it like you are if you totally understand it. Way to go if you do. I can't wait till I'm there. Okay, so on the purity and the growth card. Ganesha, clearing away obstacles, protection, and guidance. Yes, this, if you haven't watched my Chosen Ones video, I'm going to link it at the end of this video. Go watch it because what's coming to us from this equinox is we're making a shift from this is just to help you understand what I'm talking about. You're making a shift from the Ten of Wands to the Ten of Cups. So the the obstacles, the burdens, this is saying the same thing. It's all going to be cleared away. It's all going to be fading away. The obstacles are going to be removed. The burdens are going to be lifted. You're going to be shifting into that place of protection and guidance which is the Ten of Cups, which is all about total emotional fulfillment. And that's your growth. And that the timing on that is somewhere between the, uh, sorry, the beginning of February and the 24th of March. And maybe that's what's being worked on in that timeline. So come the 24th of March, not the 21st, but the 24th, you start to understand the growth. You start to sense it, see it, feel it, whatever, whatever way it is for you. Okay, so on the growth and the power, so this is between the 24th of March and the 6th of April. Ooh, we've got the eternal dance, movement, the wheel of life, path of least resistance. We are being placed on the path of least resistance. And that is the wheel of life. That's destiny. We're going to be moved onto the path of our destined. I don't even know how to say that. Um, help me interpret that better, angels. Your destined path is your path of least resistance. Okay, so we are going to be moved onto that path our destined path of least resistance. Thank you, angels. And that's sometime between the 24th of March and the 6th of April. Wow. You guys got to feel this. You've got to be able to feel this. I am having one of the biggest bliss moments, bliss hits that I've had in a long time here. I hope you can feel it too. Okay, time for a tarot deck. We're going to get... Now, I've been telling you guys for the longest time that I can't tell you what this deck is because I can't remember. But you know what? It was a part of a really big deck. Like, there, seriously, this is a good-sized deck here. I think the other part of the deck is, is about this wide. And I separated it because it was too big for me and I didn't understand the other cards. But it's called Intuit. Okay. This is the Intuit deck. It's a very cool deck. I can't... Oh, okay, I don't like how that happened. I don't remember who the deck is by, though. There we go. Thank you, angels. Okay, so on the Hidden Path card and the Ganesha card. So this is about the marriage of spirit and matter and clearing away obstacles, protection, and guidance. You've got the resolution card, which is the five of wands, but it's reversed. So it's the resolution. Harmony restored. It says situations resolve 
letting it go, harmony, finding common ground, cooperate, surrender, and solutions. No more games. That's what I'm hearing. There's no more games. Okay. Now, this is what I'm hearing in my head. Shit's getting real. Shit is about to get real in your life. If you feel like you've been stagnating, you've been held back, you've been slowed down, you've just been in some kind of a gestational fog period, Spirit is saying shit's about to get real in your life. It's, it's, it's going down. I am so looking forward to it. Okay, so on that same Ganesha card and the eternal dance, which is all about the movement that's going to put us onto our destined path of least resistance. You've got repetition over and over. Now, this is the Eight of Pentacles, but it's, again, it's in reverse. So it's about complacent, boring, scattered, repetitive, not delivering results, too much work, too little reward. Well, guess what? That's coming to an end. Do you remember that repetition card that we got a while back in one of these readings? We are going to keep going over and over and over situations in our lives until we can get to that place where we can learn to feel comfortable while sitting in a place feeling very vulnerable. But guess what? Spirit's telling me with this card here now, that's coming to an end because you're being moved onto your destined path of least resistance. This was not least resistance. This was a lot of resistance because we just weren't getting it. We weren't learning from it. We weren't, no, we're not knock, spirit and myself, not knocking anyone because I'm just getting over this myself now too. I've been reliving something over and over and over and over again financially done it's done you're once you get onto this path of least resistance your destined path this is no more you've learned this lesson you are now in a place where you are comfortable sitting in vulnerable times because it's where we're at right now if you're in this with me i'm extremely vulnerable financially right now but i feel okay i'm comfortable because I trust and I believe that spirit has my back and I am going to be taken care of and I am going to be moved to a better place. And you are too. I'm sure you're feeling what I'm feeling. You're already there. You're comfortable. You're, you're feeling vulnerable just like I am, but you're comfortable. You're okay being there. And, and that's why this movement is taking place. It's a resolution. Harmony is going to be restored. Wow. I am loving this. Absolutely loving this. Uh, what are we going to get now? Okay. We are going to get a Beyond Lemuria card. Now, each of these cards has a really, really pretty... Oh, that one's kind of cool. Um, the artwork is different on the fronts of all these cards, and the backs have different messages. But look at this guy. It's got a dragonfly. I want to point out that dragonflies don't have to flap their wings as often or as quick as any other insect to go super fast. They can go super fast with with a lot less movement of their wings than any other insect. They also can change direction on a dime. They do not have to slow down to change direction. Okay, they can be moving full, full speed ahead and change direction like that. And I feel like that's a bit of a message for us. We are about to change direction and it's going to happen like that. Oh, geez, that scared me. Did you hear that? <laughs> that was one of my decks that shifted over here. Wow. That's confirmation. 
Okay, the message is heart chakra, unfurling back to love. This chakra card represents love in its many forms. It reminds you that everything in life can unfold into love or fear. When unfurled back enough, the foundation of all you seek lies in the universal desire and right to feel loved and be loved. Love heals. God is love. This is a force that will change the world. Have compassion. Expand your awareness and heart-centered radiance for all beings on the planet. Encapsulate earth in loving compassion. Bask in the blissful feeling of the planet in all of its perfect balance, loving you back. Wow, that is beautiful. You can take a screenshot of that if you want so you can read it later. This card has never come out, but that's beautiful. We are shifting, everybody. We are definitely shifting. I want to get, I think, one more card. I know that we're, we're um, time-wise, we're taking a bit here. What am I going to get now? Something that I can reach without wrecking the camera. Okay, that was my little girl shaking her head. Let's get, we haven't had this deck out in a little bit, so, oh, let's get this one. We're going to get a card from the Shaman's Dream Oracle here. Okay. We have card 15, Dust Devil, moving out of stagnation. Wow, it couldn't seriously be a better card for the time period. And what I just finished talking about us being in a place of stagnation. The gestation was a place of feeling like we were at a standstill or a stagnation, right? And now... We're getting the card that tells us we're coming out of that, which is awesome. Okay, I'm going to read it from the book for you. Okay, it says, Dust Devil, embrace the chaos, trust in the process, moving out of stagnation. The presence of the Dust Devil causes a ruckus. Some people are afraid of its chaotic nature believing that he comes to intentionally stir things up. The truth is, you can't expect this dream ally to behave, to bring niceness, to be clean. His power is in the mess he creates as he calls for you to engage in the full cyclone of life. He represents two aspects to you now, the winds in your outer life appearing to throw you off course, where you assume the world is coming at or happening to you, and the winds that churn inside you, with the dust devil arising from your dreamscape to help you escape your invisible chains shackling you to a barren desert. Stop asking for things to be perfect. Awkward, messy, conflicted, exuberant, and wild is how you shift. Trust this process. The dust devil knows what you need, when you need it. Once things settle, you will see the gleaming jewels awaiting your discovery, the wisdom awaiting integration. You know, I have been feeling, and I said this, I think in the, the Chosen Ones video, that I can feel a tower moment heading in my direction. It's encroaching, it's getting close, but it's going to take me to a much better place. And that's basically what the dust devil is saying. You've got probably a tower moment on its way in. And just like I said, these dragonflies, they can change direction like that. And I think that's what a lot of us are going to be doing. And it is going to feel like a tower moment. It's going to be a shock to the system. It's going to be a surprise. It's going to be unsuc 
unexpected and unsuspected, you're not going to see it coming. I don't think. I, I think you might feel it. I know I feel it. I feel the chaos moving toward me. And we got to stay in that place of feeling comfortable because that is going to create a feeling of vulnerability. Don't fear. Trust in the process. Like it said, whatever is headed our way, it's going to clear things out. It's going to rid us of any blockages or obstacles. It's going to shift us out of that place of fear, guilt, and shame and into a happy place, into the sun. We're getting on our path, the path of least resistance. So, you know, there's going to be a bit of a ruckus, a bit of dust, and you're going to not want to go in that direction because maybe you're really comfortable moving in the direction you've been moving in over the winter, the gestation period. It's been calm and quiet and peaceful. Well, get ready because calm, quiet, and peaceful is not what's headed in. Does that look calm, quiet, or peaceful? Not in the least. So your life is about to turn upside down, but in a good way. It's going to take you someplace fabulous. So get ready, everybody. I am so excited for this, what's coming in. It's going to take us to our destiny. It's what you've been asking for. It's maybe just not going to move you there the way you wanted to or expected it to. Be okay with that and move with it. It's a good thing. I hope this resonated. I hope it helps you all. I love you guys. And I will see you next time. <laughs>